In this video, I'm going to talk about survey data quality. What is survey data quality? Social surveys face lots of challenges nowadays. Budgets are severely constrained. There is lots of pressure in the digital age on providing timely data. Public interest in participating in surveys is declining and now at all time, times low, which negatively affect response rates. Even when cooperation is obtained from reluctant respondents, responses may be less accurate, which obviously affects data quality negatively. New modes of data collection introduce new concerns and challenges for data quality. However, despite all these challenges, vast amounts of survey data are collected daily for many different purposes, including governmental information, public opinion and election surveys, advertising, market research, as well as scientific research. Survey data underline many very important public policy and financial and business decisions. Good quality data reduces the risk of poor policies and poor business decisions and is of crucial importance. But what is quality? So now I would like to present a very broad definition. Quality can be defined simply as fitness for use. As I just said, this definition is very broad. And as uh, this uh, video is focusing specifically on survey data, I'm gonna give a more focused definition of quality. Quality is a requirement for survey data to be as accurate as necessary to achieve their intended purposes, be available at the time it is needed, and be accessible to those for whom the survey was conducted. There is a concept of total survey quality and total survey quality concept contains two main dimensions. The first one and the more important one is statistical dimension and the second one is non-statistical dimension. So survey quality is more than just its accuracy or its statistical dimension. It, is, or it also includes, among other factors, the importance of producing results that fit the need of the survey users and providing results that users will have confidence in. Therefore, usability of results is of crucial importance. As I just mentioned, statistical dimension is the most important concept of total survey quality and accuracy is the main concept of statistical dimension. Accuracy of estimates is the difference between the estimate and the true parameter value. As I mentioned, accuracy is the most important because if the data are not correct and not accurate, all other non-statistical dimensions cannot be, very, 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 cannot be used. So here I would like to show a very simple example of what accuracy means. And here we can see a very simple equation where x is our observed item, t is our true value, and E is an error, and errors can be uh, systematic errors and random errors. Very simple example. For example, the respondents were asked, how many times did you visit a GP during the last month? And one respondent re replied that he visited the GPs three times. However, this person forgot that actually he returned back to the GP office to collect a prescription. Therefore, the true value would be 4. An observed item which the person reported in the questionnaire was 3. Therefore, our error is 1. And this error is the accuracy, the difference between the observed item and the true parameter value. Uh, so now I would like to say a few words about uh, non-statistical dimension of total survey quality. As we saw from the definition, not only accuracy is of importance, there is the whole list of important components of non-statistical dimension and different statistical organizations such as Eurostat, Statistics Netherlands, Statistics Sweden, Statistics Canada, they use subsets from this list. And uh, now I would like to mention some of the components of this non-statistical dimension. Relevance means that the data are relevant and meet, meet user needs. Timeliness and punctuality is very important from the point of view of disseminating results. This is most, one of the most important user needs. Accessibility and clarity of the data is also very important. Comparability. 
in the current uh, climate, it's very impossible to be able sometimes to conduct reliable comparisons across space and time. And uh, very often cross-national comparisons are conducted. Therefore, comparability is also a very important component of non-statistical dimension. Coherence. It, uh, when the data are coherent, we can use elementary concepts and they can be combined into more complex ways. These concepts are based on common definitions, classifications and methodological standards. Also, completeness and richness of detail, which means that data are rich enough to satisfy the analysis objectives. Credibility of data is also of importance and very important non a component of non-statistical dimension of total survey quality. It means that credible methodology, transparency and professionalism were used by the statistical organization. Interpretability of data is also important, which means that documentation which is supplied together with data is very clear. Also, level on, of confidentiality protection. It is very important that none of the units or individuals can be identified or disclosed, or the information can be disclosed. Costs are also of importance, which means that data give good value for money. This is not an exhaustive list. However, I just mentioned very important components and different statistical organizations are using subsets when they are producing uh, data quality guides for the data they collected. And now I would like to introduce very important concept from the uh, of uh, data accuracy, total survey error. I don't, I'm not going to go into lots of details here, however it will be another video available. Total survey error is a concept which was developed by Robert Groves in 1989 in his book on survey errors and survey costs. Survey estimates, as we all know, are derived from complex survey data. However, published estimates may differ from their parameter values due to different survey errors. Total survey error is the difference between the population mean or other population parameters and the estimate of the parameter based on the sample survey. So the total survey error contains sampling errors and non-sampling errors. So sampling errors are the errors which can be computed for probability samples only and that due to selecting a sample instead of the entire population. So sources of sampling error include sampling scheme, sample size, estimated choice and other. Non-sampling errors, they are errors due to mistakes or system deficiencies also from, they can come from incomplete responses to surveys or its questions, etc. Non-sampling errors include measurement errors, which they, these measurement errors cannot always be formally estimated, but can be improved by, for example, interviewing procedures or by improved question wordings in questionnaires, etc. Uh, Paul Beamer provided the a list of components of non-sampling errors and this list contains six components, six main components, specification error, frame error, non-response error, measurement error, data processing error and modeling or estimation error. In this film I'm not going to talk about details of this error However, you can listen and watch the video on total survey error where all these errors will be discussed in detail. We need also to think about other factors which can impact survey data quality. There are quite a few of them, but four of them are more important, the more important ones. For example, length of time the survey was in the field. This shows how much efforts were put to ensure a good response. The second one is the use of incentives. Nowadays many surveys are using incentives in order to in encourage participants to take part in surveys. However, we need to remember that incentives could bias the survey responses towards low income groups. Another important factor we need to think about is the reputation of the organization which is conducting the survey very good and successful records of the organization could inspire confidence. 
Another important factor which can impact survey data quality is mode of data collection. And nowadays we know that many social surveys move towards mixed mode designs as a cost-saving initiative. And they introduce online, uh, online surveys as part of these mixed modes or some surveys are moving towards online first designs. And for example, in the past, some questionnaires were not optimized for, uh, for smartphones and those non-optimized questionnaires did have negative impact on data quality for specifically those who were respondents who were using smartphones. And now I'd like to talk about actors affecting data quality. There are three main actors affecting data quality respondents, interviewers and survey research organizations. Respondents can negatively affect data quality through satisfying behavior when they put less efforts to provide optimal responses or through response style behaviors. So sometimes respondents can choose do not know answers all the time or extreme answers rather than providing their real attitude. Or for example, they can agree with all questions in attitude attitudinal questions. Interviewers uh, can negatively or positively affect data quality in interviewer administered surveys. Negatively, they could affect data quality through fabrication of data or sometimes, for example, by duplication of respondents apart from, for example, demographic questions from previous waves of the longitudinal study. They can also neg positively affect data quality through ability to elicit interest and commitment to survey in respondents. And uh, the third act affecting data quality is survey research organization. They can positively affect if they have very good sampling design or if they put lots of efforts, for example, in training of field workers, etc. So now I would like to say a few words about what is actually happening in practice. There are different data quality monitoring strategies which are used by different statistical organizations. I will mention some of them, not all of them, but some of them. So, for example, one of the strategy is called continuous quality improvement and it's used not only in statistical organizations, but in other industries and areas. And uh, this continuous quality improvement strategy involves methods for improvement in underlying process rather than screen the product itself. And it contains number of data quality management tools. There are responsive and adaptive designs, and this is real-time control of costs and efforts. They're similar in some ways, but different in other ways as well. So response designs, they monitor non-response bias and follow up efficiency and effectiveness. And adaptive design is similar. What they do, they provide tailored design for different types of sampling members to maximize response rate and minimize non-response selectivity. However, the difference between responsive and adaptive design, that adaptive design uses quite a lot of prior information, which is available, for example, for the previous wave of a longitudinal study or from the beginning of the field work of this wave. Then another strategy is called adaptive total design. And this strategy combines ideas of continuous quality improvement and total survey error framework to reduce costs and errors across multiple survey processes. There is another strategy which is called Six Sigma. Again, it's not very specific to statistical organizations, used widely, for example, in engineering as well. And it is a set of principles and strategies for improving any process. Then I would like to say, to mention Paradata, which is now used quite often, for example, for monitoring interviewer behavior and for improving data quality during, during uh, field work or during data collection stage. So now a few words about, again, data quality in practice. And there is always a question. Is it possible to obtain some sort of single score or single measure of quality taking all dimensions into account? There is no instance where a total survey quality measure has been calculated. But the main idea is to minimize different errors. 
and uh, uh, therefore cost-benefit trade-offs are needed to minimize different errors of total survey error depending on the survey aims and depending on the budget available. Quality reports and quality declarations have been used and have been produced by statistical organizations where information on each dimension of data quality is provided for the users and this is very important. So data quality guides are meant to alert the data users to potential sources of bias that might be present and they are very helpful for data analysis stage that users would provide reliable results of their analysis. So and now to conclude, data quality is a multi-dimensional concept with accuracy being the main dimension or statistical dimension being a main dimension. Single score or measure of total survey quality is not available. Cost-benefit trade-offs are needed to be able to minimize different errors depending on survey aims and, uh, and survey budget. Quality frameworks and quality monitoring strategies are developed and adopted by different statistical organizations. It is very important that broad range of relevant data quality indicators of information is available together with data. The chances of users misusing the data or misinterpreting published statistics is reduced if they understand better the strengths and limitations of the data. New technologies also require fresh considerations of data quality issues in new types of surveys. And just to conclude, high quality of survey data is very important and it brings improvement in the quality of surveys themselves. It also brings improvement of the quality of research and of public policy and financial and business decisions that are based on the survey data.